side. Uh, you can clearly tell that we're surrounded by, by vibrant culture and, and a rich heritage uh, of the land. And today we connect to really celebrate the innovation, the excellence and the collaboration in the realm of sound and light technology. So this, this expert really does help illuminate the latest and greatest while also forecasting the future of tech and entertainment industry. Uh, so we are lucky enough to be hearing from some experts and industry leaders that are all playing major roles in shaping Saudi's tourism DNA and also creating a legacy for local talent to continue to learn and grow. So just taking a look around at the room today, it's, it's clear that we're in a place where tradition meets modernity. Uh, and from this we encourage you all to take notes and to take action, using this time to connect and to continue shaping the future of the sound and light industry. So please do join in our discussions as well, as in order to succeed it's going to take many minds. So throughout the day, our program will feature a diverse array of presentations and collaborative discussions, all curated to spark creativity and encourage discourse and foster that communication that will ultimately help us succeed. So I promise, whatever your position, whatever your title, you are in the right room, you're in the right seats, um, because regardless of all of that, we are all responsible and have the privilege of setting up the future, setting up a culture and setting up a reputation that will live on with or without us. So I'd like to encourage everyone to embrace the spirit of curiosity, open your minds and share those business cards, most importantly. So now it's uh, the time to challenge ourselves and in true Saudi spirit as well, push the boundaries of what is thought to be possible or what is said to be possible as well. So on behalf of the organization committee, I extend my deepest gratitude to our sponsor partners um, and all supporters whose unwavering commitment has really made the conference possible. I also extend a warm welcome to our esteemed speakers whose expertise will hopefully enlighten and inspire all of us throughout the day. And a big thank you to all of you, most importantly, for joining us. And as previously mentioned, take note, take action, and connect. So thank you all very much, and welcome to day two of the Saudi Light and Sound Expo. So to kick things off, I'd love to welcome our first keynote speech to the stage. Uh, we're lucky enough to be hearing a keynote called Design for Tomorrow by David Gilby. So please, let's give a nice warm welcome for David Gilby, who is the Light Design Director of Deria Gate Development. So David, if you'd like to come on up. Here you, sister. Waiting for a presentation to pop up. Hi guys, I'm, I'm David Gilby. Uh, I'm a lighting and visual designer originally from the theatre, uh, film and television industry. Uh, I'm now here in Riyadh and I am a substitute speaker for this keynote. So first I want to introduce a legend. The legend that is Kurt Vermeulen, who was meant to be given this but had troubles getting here to Riyadh. Kurt has a great portfolio of creative and immersive work. I'm very lucky to call him a friend and very happy to step into his shoes today. Hang on a second, I'm having a technical issue. So this is just a, a, a snapshot of some of Kurt's creative and immersive work. And this is what you want to see, but what you're going to see is a lot of visual design, but you're going to see my vision of lighting for tomorrow. So every now and then we're going to have a quick pause of wisdom and this one is this present moment used to be the unimaginable future. You know, think, think back to the 90s when we never had LEDs and we, we just couldn't make the colour, we didn't have the, the speed of transaction. 
And first I'm going to talk about understanding. For me, Lighting of Tomorrow is about understanding. And this is George Clooney, and I've put him in here as inspiration. Because this was the first movie, Galaxy, where they used the reflected media screen of Earth to light Sandra Bullock and George Clooney. So you get this wonderful scallop of Earth in, in the face mask. And I use that as direct inspiration. And a lot of light, lighting for tomorrow is about smart thinking. This is Smash in, Hydra, uh, in Hyderabad, the entrance, and it's Sports and Virtual Reality Center. I had a quarter of a million dollars budget for projection and, uh, and media, and almost no budget for ambient and accent lighting. So I accept that my media screen is gonna give me a light level. I can't measure it because the content changes, but I can use it in joined up thinking. That's sustainable, that's, that's lighting of the future. Again here, this is, I, I can never remember the name of the artist, but this is uh, the, the, the fountain at Crown Point in Chicago. And there's some joined up thinking here, because if the community had flooded lots of local uh, ambient light around it on, on poles, then we'd have taken away from the, uh, from the effect of the artwork. For me, lighting for tomorrow is respecting. And this, this for me is respect. This is, this is what, you know, future lighting, but one foot in the past. This is celebratory. This was done by Dean Skeerer and it's an old docks. And instead of just scrapping the cranes, they've turned them into objects to art. This is one of mine. And the old and the new can sit together. This is uh, in Norway, and it's a rock museum. Lighting for tomorrow is also about well-being. And biophilia, greenery, we all have a uni uh, unique take. We all hark back to uh, living in rural times, it's in our genetics. And biophilia, what I love about it is how the psychological can affect the physiological. So in how feeling well, feeling better in yourself, you can get well quicker and they dispense less pain meds. And when I see lighting for tomorrow, I love to see sort of a media effect integrated with uh, a green wall. And, you know, how many of us in the room know how many lucks it takes to keep a tree alive in, in an atrium and how to get the, the natural light and how to supplement that? And how many of us know that a tree also has a circadian rhythm that it needs a dark period? But this is the stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm fed up of tick box design. I'm, I, I want to see meaningful design that, that makes us well. That's the lighting of tomorrow. Lighting for tomorrow communicates. This is one of my favorite light art pieces. Those traffic lights, they phase red, damber, green, red, damber, green. Love the piece. It's in the wrong place. It's in the middle of a roadway. It's in the middle of a roundabout in Canary Wharf in London. And I've seen cars physically jump on the brakes because they don't know whether to stop or go. So when I talk about communicating with light, we have to realize that we can also send disinformation with light. We can confuse with lighting. I love showing a bad example. We can use light the light we tend to see with is, is from our frontal cortex, but we have a peripheral vision here. And we can use light to send subliminal messages to our subconscious. Now this is great because it doesn't tire us. It just goes in and we just accept those messages. I'm missing a shot here. This is, this is in downtown Riyadh. This is Snowheta's metro station. But inside, 
this metro station they are using such messages to tell you and you'll just automatically pick up on it whether the station's busy if the which are the crowded carriages and which aren't and this is all being sent subconscious subconsciously into our brains I love this communicating. This is uh, the Manchester Metropolitan uh, Academy. And these, these are graphic students. And they change the content. They've got a media wall on the face of their building. And you see so much content that's static or stale. But how great the, the, the kids that are actually here sort of learning are writing the code and programming uh, the exterior of their building. It's communication on overdrive. Oops. We, Houston, we have a problem. Hang on one second. Okay. Back in the room. So we have another quick pause for wisdom. Creativity is thinking up new things. Innovation is doing new things and I and if I can be any inspiration here don't be afraid of the power of ideas I don't want to be remembered for my bad ideas I want to be remembered for the great ideas that I have and if they don't like your ideas go away and have new ones connecting there, there are great developments going on here in the kingdom and one of them is Alula and how they're taking new tech technologies and land art and desert art and they're doing this with total total sensitivity to the environment absolutely amazing first class this was at uh, Noor the Riyadh art festival uh, light art festival and this was here in Riyadh and when you when you do this and I'll go over to the next one because I've experienced this 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 was uh, Olaf Eliasson's the Sun and the Tate Gallery in London and there were people there sunbathing absolutely sunbathing it's 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 in its own way it's not so immersive but it is augmented reality this is Dan Rosengard's water lick it was first commissioned by Rotterdam to highlight the fact that Rotterdam is below sea level and global warming and, and the rising seas. And it's an effect of the sea being above you. And I saw images in Canada where people bought towels and were sitting underneath it in swimming costumes, really, really connecting. I love how we can take an ugly municipal building, a call-in tower. This is the Electra Bell Tower in Brussels. And now this has become a local landmark. Uh, in, in autumn we have leaves falling, we use those pixels for leaves to fall. And so we can really, really connect with the people and we can turn something ugly and functional in, into a part of the community and living, breathing art. So we're going to talk a bit about augmented reality. This is, this is what you've come to see. And this, this is our future. You know, we're, we're, I'm not just going to be looking at the lights that I'm mocking up. I'm going to have a pair of glasses on. I'm going to be checking my emails with my right eye at the same time. And, and you know, that's, that's the future. And it's fantastic in how immersive it can be, how, how educational it can be, how it touches our lives. The moment you're touching something, and I, I've seen this on exhibition stands where there's texture. If there's texture on a wall, it wants me to, makes me want to go up and touch it. And the moment I go up and touch it, I've made an emotional connection with it. So, just so much. It's great, great for our feel good factor for education for immersing ourselves and these are you know it's it's being it's being used in theater it's being used in gardens it's being used everywhere but 
I suppose this is what you think of when you think of lighting of tomorrow. But I, I want to take a more holistic approach on that and, and sort of talk about many other things as well. Absolutely amazing what we can do. I don't know if anyone saw the, uh, the sun at London 2012 uh, opening ceremony. Just abide by me being sung as they danced under a sun. Directed by Danny Boyle, a genius. I saw him in the Barbican once as I was walking the other way and I was too shy to stop and ask for an autograph. So I just said, respect Dan. AI. I'm going to touch on this. It's a tool, guys. It's a tool. It's, for me, it's, it's, it's only that. It can't take over the human touch. It can't. It needs curating. So it, where it is great is chucking some ideas out there and seeing what bounces back, what resonates. It's a tool. I see it, over here we a concept design. Uh, the CGI's are produced and they're approved by the board and a lot of the rendering companies are using AI and my problem managing lighting at Derea Gate is that if they're not sort of grounded in reality how are we, how are we going to do them? They're, ju they're just a pretty picture, they, they're, they're, not, they're not realistic at all. Storytelling. This for me is what Lighting for the Future is about. This is the Bibliotheca at Alexandria and stories are etched on the outside of the buildings. This is the way architects are approaching buildings now. This is Stephen Hull's Museum of Ocean and Surf and you can see that the building is surfing out of the landscape. Again, the storytelling has gone up a level before you even in and we have to raise our levels of storytelling within gallery and museum space. That's, that's the future. It's educational. You go to the likes of the V&A Victoria and Albert in London, which is a traditional museum, and they have rooms full of immersive experiences. These are the ski slopes in Ari in northern Sweden. And because of the, the latitude that it's at, in winter they have very, very short days. So they have to ski by artificial light. Now the white ski slopes on the right are the traditional ski slopes. But the one going off to the left in a zigzag tells the story of the giants and trolls in the mountains. It's actually increased ski revenue by about 35% and introduced skiing to a, to a new generation. And there they're using audio as well. So there's the sounds of the trowels, the sounds of wolves, the sounds of bears. And it's a, it's a total immersive experience. Getting back to how stories are told in museums. They're told, they're told digitally, they're all around us, they're on the ceiling, they're on the floor, they're on the walls. If anyone has been, I could have used a Van Gogh exhibition image, but we've all seen it. But you feel like you're standing in one of Van Gogh's paintings. You can see just how engaged people are. As, as they sit there and, and the story is told to them. I absolutely love the simplicity of this. I'm from the film and it's Charlie Chaplin exhibition and, and Charlie Chaplin was shot in black and white. So it's really simple. You've got black and, black and white images on the media screens but you've got the contrast of probably 50 to 1 of the black floor and the black surroundings. Just such, such sublime, simple storytelling. It doesn't all have to be like this. That's the future. Getting into the story. They, uh, in a theatre in Rome, they tell the story of the Sistine Chapel. Now, you've got to bear in mind, you're in a rectangular theatre and the Sistine Chapel is a dome. They use 36 projectors to bitmap the curved uh, Michelangelo Sistine Chapel ceiling. But they also tell the story of, of Michelangelo. And I, I've seen the show and one of the greatest things about it, 
apparently he he slept at the quarry until he found the piece of rock that the statue David was within and they managed to project that onto a piece of rock so they had like a piece of rock on the stage and they projected David inside just so moving great storytelling I've put this in there and this is another one of mine the story here is the textile industry in Leicester that could be any one of our shirts it's color changing but the reason it's in here again it's inspiring is because it tells me that the limiter to creativity is not the budget the limiter to creativity are the ideas this is a very inexpensive facade it's a steel mesh with some laser cut shapes on it and some color changing light behind and still we managed to tell a very nice story the happiness factor these the, if Kurt had given the the presentation he was going to talk to you about it so I have to and Moment Factory 3D projected on Gaudi's Sagrada Familia in Barcelona and just look at the joy on people's faces I showed you the ski slope at Ari that's the money shot look at look at the kids face this we can do this we do every day I'm gonna have another quick pause of wisdom and this quick pause of wisdom comes from me and what I say is lighting designers are light artists too just want to leave that with you there are light festivals in just about every country in the world and the reason I've chosen this this image is I love light art jellyfish they're my thing I would put a light art jellyfish on every corner of Daria I would put a light art jellyfish on every project I ever worked on but where's the context so what I say to you I've done so much light art but I've always done it not art for art's sake but within the context of the project so anyone that wants to join team jellyfish and can give me a jellyfish commission I'll happily take it uh, but I just wanted to put that out there guys thank you think light follow light love light it's all around us a big thank you to David and uh, spreading that happiness uh, which we all very much need uh, so please do stick around uh, our next keynote will be addressing entertainment reimagined Saudi cultural and entertainment reforms shaping sound and light industry and this will be from Paul Pacifico the CEO of music commissions KSA so please stay seated and uh, another big round of applause for David thank you very much